Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Holy shit, has been some time again. I think the last video was like a month, but hey, it is what it is with uh, these like PoE downsides, or at least uh, the breaks between the leaks, you know, where it's like nothing to do. And I gotta admit, I did not have the most fun in the events that started in December and after the events joining back in the trade league in January. Um, it was like, yeah, joining on a dead leak, so it wasn't fun either, so yeah. Anyways, um, we have now the Game Balance Manifesto for Siege of the Atlas that GGG uh, released yesterday because in like two, two and a half days or something like that, we should finally get the announcement or at least the, yeah, the announcement, the trailer, or at least not the trailer, the um, overview of the next league, which is going to be 317, the Arch Nemesis League. And I always like when GGG comes up with these, like, here is a, a five seconds video um, telling you guys that the next uh, expansion is called Siege of the Atlas. And then, like, a week or two weeks later, we get, like, the trailer of the trailer of the announcement of the reveal of the, like, oh my God, you know, like these kind of like weird videos. But, anyways, um, today I want to talk about the game balance uh, manifesto that GGG um, announced or released yesterday. And I wrote down the most important things here, um, so I want to go over that, give you my two cents about it, uh, what I think is good, what I think is kind of like weird in some um, cases, and then we can finally, or at least like start waiting for the announcement and then the upcoming patch notes that will clarify a lot of the issues that I will probably um, talk about today. Good. I would say let's start right into the action with the Path of XL Siege of the Atlas Game Balance Manifesto. Um, first of all, patch notes when, I have no idea, Bex can probably tell us at some point. But yeah, uh, main focus here is going to be two archetype balances, which is going to be hand cast spells. So that is going to be like, I don't know, Frostbolt, Ice Spear, everything you actually cast and should hit the enemy for a certain amount of damage. And as well as the um, changes to hit based bow attack builds because they need like way too much investment to feel good. And then only if you have a lot of damage and this um, for the cost of defense, so they wanna change that as well um, towards some other changes they are going to uh, have um, later in this uh, video. Good, changes to spells, what can we await? This is basically everything um, that is right over here in this article as well as like a shit ton of like changes or at least like a, a small snapshot of the patch notes, I guess. So there are a couple of things that I kind of wonder how this is going to work out, but hey, let's talk about it. Roughly 45 to 60% more damage for spells to opt in more defense. This is basically um, all these like on hit casters only feel good if they have a lot of investment into damage and this makes you very squishy. So they wanna go for this route that they are going to buff um, all of these kind of spells hand cast um, to opt in more defense or get even more damage if you want to go for that. You want to achieve that with a higher cast speed modifiers and rings, amulets, as well as uh, new runic daggers. Then you want to improve or remove certain threshold jewels. They want to nerf Unleash um, because it's the kind of only option for certain spells. I'm naming it like Blade Vortex or uh, like, um, I don't know, Eye of Winter or something like that. You know, there's like so many spells that you only want to play with Unleash because otherwise it just feels like utterly garbage. So you want to nerf Unleash to um, open up more ways basically um, to play these um, kind of like builds differently. And obviously with buffing all of these spells, they need to nerf all the ways that we usually use them. Because if we're honest, most of the spell cast builds are better used with like, for example, totems play style or with traps or with cast on uh, crit, for example, you know, all these like cosprays, um, I don't know, Frostbolt, uh, Ice Nova, all these kind of things, you know, if you would buff just the damage of all the spells and leave the trigger mechanics untouched, then yeah, you're gonna have like way more overpowered uh, trigger builds like Castle Crit everywhere pretty much, so you have to align that. Then they wanna use a 28% partial nerf to ignite just to counter that the more damage, but this is kind of like an issue because there is actually, um, or at least to finish that, introducing new mechanic for ignite damage with melee attacks. This will be something they mentioned, but there is nothing described there. So we have to wait for the patch notes what this is going to be. But this with the ignite nerf is something a bit weird for me, right? So they have here a list of things they want to change. So they want to add or add more base damage to the skills, which result in higher ignites, obviously. So that's why they want to nerf ignites to uh, line up with the other skills, right? But the problem is there is only a handful of, um, let me scroll down here, I think somewhere here, Ignite Compensation Changes. So, okay, they're gonna nerf Ignites overall, 
but therefore they're gonna buff Armageddon Brand, for example, or Burning Arrow, or Vile Burning Arrow, or Explosive Arrow, right? But what about skills that do not really have any Ignite modifiers, but are still used in Ignites? The first thing that comes into my mind is Hex Plus, for example. Like, Hex Plus Ignite is something I have played um, a couple of times already, and it's probably the only way nowadays to play Hex Blast. I, I can remember there was a Hex Blast Archmage build to one shot stuff, but after all these changes to mana and, and like um, Archmage support and stuff like that, I think the only relevant uh, Hex Blast build is Ignite. So, Hex Blast is not really meant to be an Ignite build, it's just what what players did with the skill to gain the most effect out of it was to play it with Ignite just because it has some uh, more damage with ailment modifiers, for example, right? So if Hex Blast, for example, does not get a direct buff to the spell, since it's not really um, a fire skill um, that is used to uh, Ignite, basically, this will have some uh, big nerfs to that part just because of the overall nerf to Ignite. So there is going to be a lot of other skills that are not ignite specific but are used for ignites right so i hope this list is going to be a lot bigger once the patch notes uh, come live if these are the only ones then uh, yeah that's actually a little bit sad i would have also liked to see um buffs to bleed for example or poison because to be honest i think ignites are in a very good state i mean obviously now with the nerves and stuff like that um it's a bit questionable how they're gonna be in the end but i i kind of think like ignites are just superior when it comes to like uh, ailment damage for example right i i did love to um love to um, play bleed bow for example or viper strike pestilence strike all these like um poison or at least ailment dot builds right but ignite is just the best of all worlds pretty much right and with all the buffs to ignite in, in the past uh, leaks it just i think ignites are just in a very good spot right and that's why i would have love to see some love to bleed because to be honest the what is the most successful or best bleed build right now in the market right it Kinder is Corrupting Fever, which is technically not even a bleed build, right? So, but you guys understand what I want to say about this, right? Good, yeah, there is like other many uh, things, for example, I think there was something with Fire Burst. So, Fire Burst here um, gets some damage buffs, but for me, this skill is now dead again. So, why is that? If... If it's buffed, so why, why should it be dead? Because it is now back to the one and a half seconds. And I did play Fire Burst a couple of times already. And I always said, like, it used to be one second. It felt amazing. Then they nerfed all the damage, but it also got the 50% uh, increased cooldown, which is 1.5 seconds. And the only ways to counter that is by our belt or uh, boots where you get cooler recovery speed, right? And this was a way to get it back to, like, 1.1, 1.2, right? But it still felt kind of awkward to its counterpart part where it used to be one second so last leak they um, let the damage pretty much the same but the cooldown got reverted to one second so it felt a lot better right and now one leak after they are going back to one and a half seconds so this this line i don't care about this damage thing right the only thing i care about is the cooldown when i see 1.5 seconds i i can already tell you guys i'm not gonna play fire burst if it is 1.5 seconds cooldown then another thing that i've seen here um was something with the trigger effects uh, was it Mjolnir or something? Poet's Pen, Cosprey's Malice, Mjolnir has a cooldown trigger, chocolate spells increased to 0 0.25 seconds. So we are pretty much back to, I think it was Delph League, because in Betrayal 3.5, they changed it to 1.15 seconds, what we are ha use now, right? With like 7, 8 um, attacks or triggers per second, if you have like your right attack speed and, and stuff like that, cooldown recovery and, and all that kind of things, right? But it's now back to 0 0.25, so baseline is only 4 triggers per second. I mean, obviously, with the buffed spells and so on, our skills, um, even though they get triggered less often, they should still do um, the same damage at all, right? But it's going to be interesting um, to see those uh, proc rates, uh, how they're going to translate with all of these kind of buffs. Good. Then let's go down to the um, changes to hit-based um, bow builds, um, which basically they want to buff bow builds in the same way or the same... Um, manners basically as the um, hand cast spells. So they said like, okay, you need way too much investment to make a decent build, but only of the cost of defense. So they want to buff both of the uh, both of those worlds to opt in for more defenses. So they want to add um, flooded add damage, which is available for two-handed melee weapons to be the same value as on the bows, because bows flat damage is usually a lot lower than the melee 
a two-handed weapon so they want to just say like okay what well, you know what this is gonna be the same so the bow flat damage is going to be a lot higher than it used to be then you want to buff the bow um bows in general so up to 50 percent more base damage on um certain bows basically then you want to buff the masteries of the bows in the skill tree you know with the mastery rework that we had last week then rework the quivers and added new quivers so there's going to be a table with like a, a lot of new quivers um that is going to be available in 317 with all the uh, new changes. And uh, this, this thing is actually something I really like. Change elemental damage with attack skills to increase damage with bow skills. The problem is, if you play something like Bleed Bow or Poison Bow or something like that, or Chaos Bow, whatever, Toxic Rain, you know, the problem is you don't really have any prefixes. You have like, I don't know, flat physical damage maybe, and, and that's pretty much it. And then you have like life on your quiver. But the prefixes with all the, the flat lightning damage and stuff like that is kind of useless. So... They're going to change that. Now we're going to have increased damage with bow skills, which will complement all of these like physical um, bow builds or chaos bow builds and stuff like that. Then the plus one arrow prefix that is used to be, I think there was two. The Shaper was one, the other one, I think there was another influence that had plus one arrow on the prefix, is now baseline and suffix. I really like that it's now baseline, so you can use that on like um, fractured or synthesized quivers, for example, right? Um, to gain still the plus one arrow, because this is, I think, one of the best um, stats that you can have on, on a quiver, basically, right? But it's now a suffix, and this is something I don't like. I would really like to keep it as a prefix, just because of the mentioned thing that I just said. On the prefixes, you have a hard time. For example, if we take rings, for example, what, what suffixes do you want to have? There's like so many, from crit multi, um, resistances, uh, just crit strike chance, like all kinds of things are all suffixes. And then prefix, you have life, and at least crafted minus mana cost because or, or minimum frenzy or something like that i don't even know if that i think there was also prefix suffix uh, I, I don't know it doesn't matter but the thing is still the same it's the same with the quivers you know there are not any good prefixes if you want to play a chaos build or something like that you always have life and plus one arrow and then if you're playing alley build like elemental hit or something then you can opt in the elemental damage with attacks but you know the plus one uh, arrow was a prefix now is a suffix which i you know, on all these builds, you just want to have crit, crit, multi, and those kind of things on your suffixes. But hey, we're going to see how that's going to work out. At least it's now baseline, so that's pretty good. And nerf edit damage support gems to counter uh, buffed local mods. This is basically everything that is like um, awakened, uh, or at least like edit cold damage, edit lightning damage, uh, edit chaos, all these kind of things. Since they're going to add a big ton of damage on the bows, they want to nerf these support gems to open up for other possibilities, which I pretty much welcome. Then others, nerf Hydrosphere to have an internal one second cooldown when hit. This is just to counteract those builds that use Hydrosphere um, to chain proliferate your projectiles to the bosses that did not... I think that's the way it works, right? So you hit um, your the boss with a projectile, right? And if you have like GMP, the projectiles that did not hit the boss could chain from the Hydrosphere to actually hit the boss so you have a lot more damage output and they don't want to have um, this to be a thing. This is kind of sad for those builds that really have a lucky single target and Hydrosphere was the only thing to make it actually a good single target and now this is gone. So basically it can still chain but only once every second so it's not really a, a, re a relevant thing anymore. Then mark skills are now permanent. This is basically something um, to counteract for the people that just doesn't have a lot of currency that cannot afford like um, all these curse on hit rings or mark on hit basically. And that sort of style because there is unique um, stuff that actually apply marks as well. They just want to say like mark skills are permanent. That means if you self cast it in the start of a fight, it's going to be there forever basically until the boss is dead or you're dead or run out of portals, which is something... Yeah, I guess is is fine. And fortification generation now ignores the target damage reduction. This is something I cannot really uh, say anything about because since all these changes, I just didn't play any other melee character at all. I was just sticking to my ignite build, to my dot build. So I I haven't even tested fortification, but I guess it's a good thing. Then skill balance. This nerf seismic traps AOE to counter insane overlapping sort of. So there is some um, changes to the AOE there. The, the thing is like, basically on the wording, I personally have never played this um, seismic trap, so I don't know exactly how it works. I just know that this skill is doing a tremendous amount of damage um, with all the 
amount of traps that you can actually throw uh, and the overlapping so they want to counter uh, like counter it a little bit and nerf toxic rain in order to line up with other bow skills to the bow buffs which is basically a true thing right if you buff all the bows and everything and then um you just leave the skills untouched they're gonna be insane basically so there's a, a bit of a nerf on a toxic rain skill gem but still overall it's, it should kind of do the same damage and then we have the unique item balance nerf of march of the legions to have only one blessing thankfully because i think march of the legion is just an overpowered thing I don't think that this ever worked as intended after the reworks from the um, mana reservation efficiency, how that kind of uh, thing work, and now just pressing your, your flasks pretty much, one, two, three, four, and get like a lot of like 50% uh, auras with that usually being like hatred, salad tree, determination, grace, whatever things and you just have them and for like 30 seconds and you can even enhance those with like self curse temp chains it was just weird to have so much power and now it only gives one blessing but they're gonna add a blessing as a support gem kind of to um give you like this aura as a buff for a certain amount of duration without actually reserving um mana which kind of is a buff to mind over matter builds in that case because you don't actively reserve mana so you have um, your mana free uh, for your defenses or for an Archmage type of build so you actually can spend the mana as well, right? Then you want to re uh, remove Mortal Conviction Keystone but at a, at a similar support gem. This was basically, let me quickly open up my uh, PUB over here that should be on the left bottom side. Let me quickly hit, that should be this one over here. You can only have one permanent non banner aura from your skills um, and stuff like that, you know? So that's going to be a thing of the past but they want to add... Um, a mortal conviction like support gem um, that kind of does the same thing or something like that we're gonna wait for the patch notes then supreme ego this is basically something um that all of these like one aura things usually mind over matter builds use which is basically over here i just need to see that you guys can see that as well which says you can only have one permanent aura from your skills and then uh, increased effect of that right the thing is, they're going to re, uh, remove that. So you can have more than one aura with Supreme Ego, but therefore giving you increased aura effect based on the mana reservation of that specific aura you're going for. Then they want to nerf the Shade Form. This is basically to kill off, uh, who was it, Rutus, um, permanent, what is it, Bone Shatter, Immortal build, basically. So... It doesn't recover the cooldown anymore as long as it's active. Then the nerf of Strength of Blood to not longer scale with life recovery rate. That might be my fault, but hey, I don't like builds that are permanent or that are completely immune to all forms of damage. GGG doesn't like that either. Um, so that's a thing of the past. I think that people will still find a way to make Strength of Blood immunity builds next league. We're going to see about that. Then they're going to buff the Dancing Dervish to gain Rampage on uh, its melee hit just because it is very hard to gain those devils like the weapon um, active on boss fights it's very hard to gain rampage there and if they now get rampage on melee hit so they can permanently be active and they're gonna nerf the void fletcher arrows it's not known how they're gonna nerf it um specifically but they said they want to nerf it just because it is the go-to uh damaging quiver for bossing and stuff like that because those arrows uh, that got triggered just dealing a tremendous amount of damage good that's pretty much it what all of this manifesto is like i just think like everything is is fine you know I'm, I'm never the guy that is like worried about oh my god they nerfed this it's unplayable like you always have to test it and see how it's going to play like i just say the 1.5 seconds um on fire burst is way too much i'm not gonna touching that no matter how much damage it's doing just because it feels clunky on the clearing side and as well as i mentioned above here with the um ignite changes you know with all the builds that are using ignite just not with a typical ignite skill they're gonna have like nerves all the way just because of that um and then the same thing here with nerfing traps and um mines and triggered skills and, and stuff like that you know this could always backfire because not every um or there are like trap skills that are not using any of the the buffed spell casting things but they still gonna get nerfed just because of the overall nerfs to traps mines and uh, triggered skills and stuff like that so that's gonna be you know a double-sided uh blade here basically just we're gonna see how this is going to uh, end up in the end of the day this is just like a preview um sort of of what they're working i'm pretty sure they're gonna adjust a lot of things or address a lot of things and add new things and then we're gonna have the overall uh, patch notes at some point um that we can see the final results what is going to get live in 317 
All right, guys, um, I think that's it for this video. How long until the uh, reveal? I'm pretty much sure that I'm going to live stream that. So it's going to be in like two days, 11 hours. So that should be on... Friday evening, something like that. We're gonna see, then we're gonna see what is coming in the new um, Arch Nemesis League, what it's all about, what new items and what new skills we're gonna get because this is the part where I'm usually the most interested in. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.